aqui.
Hi, Roy. You know John? Yeah, John. John Roy. I'm Matt. Roy. Hey, Trying. Yeah. I'm going to double check on the boiler just in case. You never know what this is Oh, all right. Question. I got your email. You did? Yes. <laughs> I figured since I would be seeing you, I wouldn't bother. You would wait. I, I try and uh, it over. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I think it's just the same exact thing. It's it's happened at least this would be the third time. And it's, yeah. So it's just the same. I know I tried to talk you through it before. Right. And you, you didn't see where I was talking about, but it was. In Outlook, is that where you go to make the change? No, in Outlook? Outlook has nothing to do with your Picasso. I think it's in Picasso that I need to go into. Picasso has to be told to watch the specific folders that you use. But there's another issue, it's probably related. <clears throat> uh, here to four, when I'm in. Picasso and I make a change. I'm working on a given image. I change it. I save it to whatever. Boom. I get the change in Picasso. It shows up. That's not happening. So you're saying when you save it and Let's you go say, back to look at it, it's the original file, it's not the model. I think it's the opposite. I, if I'm in Picasso mm -hmm. and I'm working on a file and Lightroom has nothing to do with it, yeah. if I make a change and save it as, and when I modify an image and I want to put it back in the original the photo file, my machine's photo file, I save it as, yeah. and I do a dash one 
to the number showing that it's the first revision. Invariably, when I do that, every time that I do that, while I'm in Picasa, I save as, I get a little pop-up message that shows that Picasa has changed that image, shows the new number and everything. And if I click on it, the revision will be will appear right there. In so it sounds like it's just not launching at all. That's what it was doing before. Now, so watching which folder? The folder that you're saving. That's how Picasso does that. It watches folders yes. determined by you or any new files. And when it stops doing that, you stop getting those notifications because it's not watching. Right. So, but but I wouldn't go into. It doesn't uh, matter what program creates them. It's watching the folder. It could be a Pizza Hut app that's saving a file there. Yeah. And if Picasso is not watching, it's not going to be. Yeah, but, but my point is if. You said I should go into Lightroom and make the change. No, I said Picasso. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm way out the lunch. I thought I asked you, do I go into Picasso to make the change? Yeah. And you said no Lightroom. You asked me if you go into Outlook to make the change. Oh. And I said not Outlook. Outlook has nothing to do with it. Picasso. Got it. Okay, Roy. We are on the same page. So I'll go into Picasso. And I'll click on settings, maybe. I'm, I'll go back and look at the instructions I sent you before. Okay. Um, because it seems to be. I would, I, I would yeah. be more capable, more able to follow that now, I think, because yeah. I understand the concept here. Yeah. Got another issue. Oh, we got, I suspect. Is that the guy from? I think that's Mr. Gruber. Hi, Roy. He's uh, he's muted. So. Can you hear us? Yeah, you're All right. right. We can hear you, but you still appear to be muted. Now? Oh, yes, I can hear you now. <laughs> okay. He's doing this whole room, or what is he saying? Um, so he's seeing that little square up at the top. Uh, so okay. he's not seeing you, Larry, I don't think. Okay. But, um, I'm seeing the, the room and with all the tables laid out, the chairs, etc. cetera. <laughs> uh, you know, it's not a perfectly wide field view. So where's the... Uh, Camera pointed on your the camera's oh, it's that one. Okay, I'm trying to get as much of the room as possible, but okay, that's Larry over in the background. Hi, Roy. Larry, my pleasure. Mine too. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Looking forward to it. So, do I understand correctly that you're going to make a you're going to relocate permanently yeah. from Pennsylvania to? Bill's Road in the spring? Uh, in the fall, apparently, right now. Oh, fall. Yeah, we're building a, a workshop on our property, and that will not be done until the fall. So, what do you want? Um, I see. Where are you like? I'm, I'm not actually okay. running anything other than technology. We're just. Really? Are you John? Yes. Hi, I'm Anne. Hi, Anne. Nice to meet you. Tell me more. John, Jim McLean. What's that? Jim? Oh, Jim. You must be Anne. I am. I am. You must be Larry. You must be the only Larry I know. Really? I'm unique. <laughs> no. You say your word. Hey, Daddy. Yeah. I don't know. Good How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. How are you doing? What's new and exciting, eh? Oh, not a lot. No. Can I break my Bible to drink coffee? I like mask rule. Yeah. Well, just don't breathe. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. That's all I gotta do. How does it work? You work up there. You tell me. The federal government requires masks and indoors in public buildings and federal buildings. So if you want to accept, that's fine. Is it? You're just gonna. Do I keep cut a little hole? No, I wouldn't do that. You know, Jim. How are you doing? Good. Good. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Come on in, Papa Squat, wherever I guess. Who are you? 
Uh, uh, Steve Ripple. Hi, Steve. Larry Peterson. Glad to meet you. Glad to meet you. I'm Roy. Roy Dots. Hello, Roy. 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 Giga Roy. Roy. Giga Roy. Very good. I don't know how you do it. 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 I Manager for Spitter, and I do the computer oh, work for town offices. A lot of people are funding in the town. I saw your profile. Oh, wow. it's good. Oh, the page, what page? Hmm. Yeah, it, it, like I said, I didn't realize because, like I said, Danny and I uh, worked for wow, 10 years together in the IT department. Over Jack. Yeah, the Jack. So he was like support tech, and I was he was out dispatching me, and I go for all the campus. Don't tell him, Mark. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling stories. It must be Danny. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Danny. Must, I, I didn't tell all the stories, though. <laughs> you must have your phone plugged into your truck because you're breaking up. No, it's just the crappy cell service in Winter Harbor. <gasps> oh. Oh. Is <laughs> This is this is not an owl. It's just a camera sitting right here trying to capture as much of the wind as possible. But the audio pickup is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Larry was talking to uh, Mr. Kruger from the back of the room, so I just think he'll will do the the job. Uh, for now, anyway. he hasn't. I didn't know he's trying to. Anywhere. Apparently, nobody wants to sit on that side. Where's the heat? I'm going to go check to see if they the boilers. You'll know a lot more. That's why I'm going to get to the side of it. Yeah. It's a mile. I thought I found it. Well, this is an important session, then, obviously. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Larry Peterson. Larry Peterson? Yes. Sandy Horton. Hi, Sandy. I've seen your Sandy name. Sandy what? Horton. I've seen your name, too. It sounds familiar. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I might even know you. Without, yeah. without the mask yeah, on. Without the mask on. Yeah. Are you okay, Valerie? Yeah. Um, I had spoken at the Veterans Committee a couple of years ago about wellness and what you did. Oh, I, yes, that's where I remember your name. I wasn't at the meeting. Yeah. Hey, Mark, I thought you were going to be Excuse me. Yeah, I was at that. Yeah. 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 Y
Uh, okay. I thought you were going to be gone. I did too, but the VA, yeah, no. uh, they canceled one of my appointments, the uh -huh. video appointment, uh -huh. of course, Video Connect. And so they shifted everyone down. So oh, okay. really? I get it. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. Yes, I remember the, I remember your name from that, I guess.
I saw Eve just walk in, but while we're waiting, uh, people on Zoom. You say you saw Eve? Yeah, just he's walking. Eve is walking. In. Oh. Well, I'm on, on Zoom, Danny Mitchell. I'm a uh, resident of the town of Goolsboro, Board of Selectmen, um, one Harbor police chief, kind of an IT guy. So. <laughs> and I'm Roy, Roy Groover, part time resident of, uh, of Prospect Harbor, soon to be full time, and uh, coming to you from Pennsylvania, where I was, where I am the retired. Mm -hmm. D director for Lehigh University and um, technical advisor, former technical advisor for the Pennsylvania Education Research Network. I'm Roger Dean, president of Prospect Harbor and the editor of the Paul Bunyan Road Association newsletter. I'm Pat Boggs, resident of Prospect Harbor and retired software executive. Also coming to you through my phone because my internet is down right now. <laughs> I'm Susan Beerzachudek, um, part-time resident of Prospect Harbor, small business owner with some serious internet issues while I am um, living in Prospect Harbor, coming to you from California right now. And just a housekeeping detail, this is being recorded, so we'll have that as a record probably avoid saying anything we'll regret. Yeah. Hey, Wilkinson, who's part-time manager. Okay. Um, so, you know, background of, um, we were Christian broadband and then kind of with a think of county exhibition broadband established in March of 2019, so almost three years ago. Um, two of us got together and we played a bunch more sense than the uh, concept of mission was to try to work with communities across the United States where I'm in uh, and help this broadband landscape and try to help solve the issues with broadband gaps, we'll call them, you know, throughout the United States and certainly within the state of Maine. Down east of it. So, um, I'll give you a whole history of the commission, but we won't pick up that time today. Excuse me, it's really hard to hear you on Zoom. Can you be a little bit more clear and, and loud, please, for us? I can try. Where's your microphone? Thank you. Microphone is up, up here. Maybe. Do you want to help the front up there? Sure. On this side or that side? Just a moment, he'll be right there. You know, I'm going to take the mask off. <laughs> All right, how's that? That seems better so far. Thank you for making the effort. Okay. Um, so, Hancock County Commissioners uh, put out an RFP um, to try to hire consultants to try to help broadband and, and see what they can do in Hancock County. Um, they are currently looking at ARC money and have set aside a chunk of our money to say, hey, can we help expand or help the broadband gaps in Hancock County? Uh, so part of our job is a variety of different things that we're doing, but we have um, created a survey that's on the Hancock County Commissioner's website. And so we're pushing that in all of these meetings, trying to get people to you know, uh, also put it on their own town websites. And if they have social media, promoted through social media because what that's going to do is give us a, a landscape of the folks that you know are struggling uh, what they have what they don't have also involved uh, as part of that survey is a speed test which is a connect main speed test so it's consistent so you can always see those speed test results just by going to the connect main site that's where it takes you is a speed test um, so we really want to push those two things to start this project which is the survey and the speed test uh, so within Hancock County, there are a variety of projects going on already. There are folks that haven't started broadband committees. Um, I'm curious where Goosboro is. You know, within that, we met with Winter Harbor a couple of weeks ago. Is that right? A couple of weeks ago. 
Um, you know, and so there are folks that haven't started anything to do with broadband, but they know they want it. They know they want to try to, you know, in, in fill the gaps where they exist or start new because there's nothing. There are projects that are already going on um, that are near completion, projects that are halfway in between. And so we've, you know, spoken to the commissioners a few different times now where every other Tuesday where, you know, we have an agenda item for broadband on there so you can always listen in. And we've had a couple of public forums and we can have another one if that helps as we go forward. But it's really trying to get the word out to everybody that's, you know, the, the commissioners are looking at broadband as a whole. They know they can't solve it with the ops money that they have. But my point to them is you have enough money to either help solve some projects or really keep projects moving is where it's at. So um, as we know, there's lots more money coming and we can talk about funding during this meeting if you wish. Um, but our, our one of our goals, or, yeah, one of our goals is to really just kind of figure out what there is for broadband and what there is and where are those gaps across Hancock County. Um, so through through the survey and through the speed test, that's one way. We're also taking the maps um, and we can talk about federal federal maps and their inaccuracy, if you will. Um, and I can explain, you know, how the 477 data works and census blocks, but we are taking that data to at least get a, you know, kind of a, a, an understanding of what the carrier said, um, which isn't always accurate, as we know. We can overlay the speed test data on that. Uh, we can overlay road and map data, right? Um, and just start to get layers of, of what the county looks like. And so that's... John, uh, is it okay to ask a question? All the way through. Okay. Uh, did I understand correctly that you're involved right now in trying to find out where broadband exists in Hancock County? Yes. So you don't know that answer yet? We know from a federal level and from a, so when I say that, you can, you can get maps from federal, you can get maps from the Connect Main website that show where carriers say that they have broadband. But the challenge with those is they go by census block. And so if a carrier says that I cover a census block, that doesn't mean they cover the entire census block. It means they, they have service within the census block, but not down every road, so to speak. Well, that's kind of a confusing situation. I had no idea that it was that sketchy. Yes. I thought it would be clearly defined. No, no, because um, the way that the census, the way that the data goes into the fence, it's called the 477 form. And every, it's self-reported. So everybody that provides broadband across the United States twice a year has to report per census block what they have for services. And it's self-reported. So like I said, they can just say, I have gig internet at the census block, but I might only have it in 10 houses, right? So that's the challenge. And that's why the speed test data is per location. And so now we can see on a map that this person took a speed test and they're getting, you know, two over one or they're getting 10 over one or they're not getting what, you know, they're subscribing to or what's being touted as deliverable. So that's why that 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 data combined with the, the uh, um, survey that we're doing, that's critical. It's with critical the, data. With the speed test, do you recommend that people do it more than once, maybe over the course of a week, or do you just want to more time? Yeah, no, they can take it as many times as they want. What's nice about the speed test data that way is it only will record per location, okay. right? So they can take it, like you'll see, you can go look at right, this area on the Connect Main map. And it will say, I'll make up numbers, 500 speed tests taken, 100 locations. Okay. So it'll just show it per location. So, yes, it's, uh, I, I encourage multiple speed tests because it gives you a better sample. Yeah. Um, so, from a Hancock County perspective, that's, those are some of the things that we're doing the mapping, the, the survey, the, you know, promoting the speed test. Um, and that really what they've hired us for is um, when it comes to the ARP money is to look at projects. Um, and so as your project goes along and say, hey, you know what, we need X amount of money. And so they would come through us. We would, I'll call it the vetting process. We would vet that project and say, okay, this is a good project. It makes sense. You know, yes, this money, you know, would recommend, if you will, that, that uh, money being spent towards that project. And so, like I said, different ones going on at different times. Um, so, you know, there's... Uh, Cable company, right? Spectrum is around. They've 
covered a lot of some towns, but they haven't come some of the roads. And so what some towns are saying, I've talked to Spectrum already and said, hey, you know what, if you come back in and cover these two miles, we got what we need. At least we have brought there. Now. Excuse me, may I ask a question, please? Yes. So for those of us who are not full-time residents, we can't do the speed test there. We know what uh, we've been promised and what our experience is. But if this is time sensitive, there are an awful lot of people who won't be included in these tests. So have you accounted for that in any way? Yeah, so the survey you can take and fill in that, and we could leave, you know, we'll, we talked about that actually at Winter Harbor, um, the seasonal, is just leaving this information up for, you know, there's no deadline necessarily on this project right now. So that can go into July when people get back, you know, June okay. and July, they test. Yeah. All right, absolutely. thank you. Thanks sure. a lot. Sure. Um, so from a, from a funding perspective, um, I use Spectrum as an example. Now there's also, you know, there's challenges with Spectrum and their services and their customer service and right, all of that comes into play. So we, we are determining from a Hancock County perspective, from a commissioner's perspective, this project, you know, we're not going in and evaluating, um, uh, what do I want to say, but so kind of the uh, financial construct of some of these projects is a good way to look at it. Um, we do do that as a consulting and do feasibility studies and all of that, but our job here isn't to get into those details, that detail level. So I, I say that because I didn't want people that are in projects going that, you know, already using other consultants. We're not here to replace other consultants. Um, there's a few around. Vaccine does a lot of jobs around here. Brian Lippold, um, the Casco Bay Advisors, both great people, good projects, right? Um, our job isn't to replace anybody. Our job is, again, at a 30,000 foot Hancock County level working with the commissioners. Um, they don't have enough money to, you know, I'll say build fiber everywhere, uh, but they do have money that can go towards projects to kind of help it move along. And so other funding sources, right, is Connect Maine, for the Maine, and they have three different, three different versions of funding. Um, and so if you're just starting a project, like, a, like this one, uh, I don't know how long Google, the Goosboro kind of broadband project, committee for very long, no, this is the this, this is even one, yeah. This is okay. All right. So like Winter Harbor, as you're getting into it, right, you might come across some expenses. So Connect Maine has what they call a startup grant. So that's for like a few thousand dollars. You can go online and get a startup grant and see if there's stuff that you need to do. Um, their next one is a planning grant, and that can be a little bit more expensive. So as you get into oh, um, you could do engineering. Maybe there's some engineering that has to get done. Um, Maybe there's an RFP that needs to go out to say, hey, you know what, for these three towns, I want to pull together an RFP that says, okay, and I'm talking about that in a second, but, um, you know, where, how does that, how do we want to do that? Um, and then they have infrastructure grants. So that would be if you've chosen a provider and you want to spend a few tens of thousands of dollars or a hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars or two million dollars, that's where the infrastructure grant comes in. And they open these windows at different times during the year. My, the planning grant currently is available the first of every month. So you can just kind of put that in consistently. I'm sorry, the startup grant is every month. The planning grant, they just opened, or there's a window open right now and it closes January 20th. And then the infrastructure grant opened yesterday and it's going to close March 20th. So you guys aren't really in the position for necessarily trying to get a planning grant done or certainly an infrastructure grant. Uh, but they will reopen those windows throughout the year. They don't have a schedule, so I can't tell you when. Um, and there's also going to be, you know, that's Connect Maine, who's been around for a while. Um, they've currently run off about a million dollar budget, from two different people that have tried to done that over the last number of years. Um, it's not sufficient. It hasn't been, and everybody knows it. So the taxpayers of the state of Maine approved a 15 million dollar bond a couple of years ago. And so that's the money that Connect Maine now has to spend on these planning grants and infrastructure grants. Um, that money will run out soon. So yeah. keep that in mind, so to speak. And then there's the other two federal programs that have hit this last year. Uh, one of them is being, well, three technically. You have the ARC money, right? So every state, every county, and every city and town has a portion of ARC money they can spend. Our money is pretty general. Um, I look at the town manager, I'm sure she knows. <laughs> mm. um, and the broadband is one of the things you can spend it on, and you can spend it on a whole other COVID relief, right? So it's getting spent a variety of different ways. That's at the town level. 
um, at the county level is the same. Um, there's rules around it. And so we just kind of monitor those rules about broadband and say, okay, how can this get spent so that it matches the broadband rules? So when I talk about our role for the county is from a project, from a uh, overall project perspective, or I should say per, per, per town project or per multiple town project. We do a vetting process. One of those things we do is bounce it up against ours, right? Does it does it meet ours, right? So if a town is completely covered with fiber, they're not going to get out home because it doesn't qualify. But unserved, underserved, by definition, um, and we can talk about that a little bit. That's what we really look at. And does it match? And the final rules just came out this last week for you know how ARP can be spent. They have interim final rules for the last. How long year it's been? I don't know how long it's been. The final rules just came out. So now we just kind of, they're in favor of broadband. How's that? So that's good. That's good. Um, and then I call it the King money, <laughs> Senator King, the Treasury money that has come out. Um, that he wanted specifically for broadband. Um, and that is $126 million that's coming to the state of Maine. And the way that that worked is every state had to apply for that money by December 27th of 21, Maine did. Um, and so that money you know, will be available this year. Um, the other thing with the state of Maine is we've always had Connect Maine. They now have commissioned a new uh, Maine Connectivity Authority. And so that is the authority that's overseeing that $126 million. And how they're gonna do that, we don't know yet. But the way that the treasury money is working is you had to apply for it. Um, and then now in the first, I'll say quarter, they now have to define how they're going to spend that money. So you need to come up with a grant program and you can either just you know, come up with these parameters and send it back to the feds and uh, NTIA. No, I take that back. The treasury are the ones that are covering this capital project that's out of the treasury money. And so the rules will come from that. We haven't seen the rules yet. And then connect, you know, the whatever main connectivity authority decides will be those rules wrapped around that. And then the money, you know, you say main is getting 126. Yeah, 126. Yep, yeah, it's roughly there. I've heard 126, 127. It's yeah, there's a every state in the country got a hundred million dollars, and then there's a multiplier. And who uh whose decision, who is the decision authority as to how that money is spent? The main connectivity authority. So they oversee now, they put this legislator put them in place because they knew this money was coming. And so now they're, I don't know how Connect Maine folds under them at this school or how they will look. Um, they had Connect Maine had a meeting yesterday. There's legal lawyer paperwork going back and forth with memorandums of understanding between the two to see who does what and how they're run. But that's to be determined. So. Um, and then there's the new infrastructure one. So the infrastructure passed. Um, I'm sorry, I should go back to the capital money. The capital money, King's version of that was all for broadband. Um, when it hit the legislative sausage making, it definitely did not say broadband. And so there's other uh, things I'll say that that money can be spent for. And so some states are choosing that as well. Maine is not, but there's. I know Rhode Island, I talked to them and they may take half of it and build a hospital or something. So there's variations. But King's intent was for broadband, and that's how Maine's looking at it. So that's good news. Um, and then there's the infrastructure bill. So that just hit again, $100 million is going to every state, and then another multiplier. The challenge with that multiplier is the feds, back to your question about mapping. Um, will not apply the multiplier until they've figured out mapping across the United States. Because it's been a problem for so for a long time. When that's going to happen, I have no idea. That could be a year, that could be two years. Yeah. But with that said, that hundred million dollars up front, I'll call it, um, that technically that that is going to be run by NTIA, which is National Telecommunications something Association. Um, it's been around a long time. That money is going to be uh, run by NTIA nationally. Um, they had six months to write their rules after the signing of the bill. So that'll be June or July, depending on how Fed counts the time. Um, and then I don't know if that money is going to be immediately available this year. So in theory, 
Maine's getting, you know, 200 plus million in 2022. And how they decide and figure out how that's going to get spent, we don't know yet. But that's kind of the funding model as it sits today. So there's, there's currently Connect Maine money that's available. There's off money that's available within the county and the, the towns and where, you know, the county itself and said, okay, they're taking, they're looking at our money and saying, what can we do for these projects? So that's why I'm here. That, that's, that's my job is why I'm here. Um, so it's a lot of words. So I'll stop for questions <laughs> for a second. Yeah, I was just looking at the NTIA uh, uh, toolkit for us. And as far as advising, uh, like a, a group like us, as far as would you be with the consultancy? Um, would, would you be providing like a consultancy for uh, a setting up a committee? Yeah, right. So I can. That's all I can. Um, I can. I can work with you to kind of get the committee going. Right. Under the Hancock rule, you know what we're right. doing for them. Right. Um, you know, and so let me talk about how how we would do it. People do it differently, right? So we start a committee. We work with helping start a committee. Um, we do a survey, which is already being done. We do a speed test, already being done, right? So you don't have to worry about those things. You um, can just tag on to the counties, right? Um, and really, what we're trying to do is gather. We call it data gathering. Um, we have public forums, which we've already done, but we can do some very specific ones if you want in the towns. So I think that definitely falls under this project that we're doing for the county. Um, and really, what you're trying to do is pull out that information from people that what is broadband, right? Well, it's, cool. it's all defined differently. Right, different people have different versions of broadband. So, having those surveys and having those public meetings, you know, with the residents and the businesses, and say, okay, what's broadband to you, and how do you? And we always ask the two questions we really ask is, you know, how do you see your town with broadband in the future, and how do you see a town if nothing happens with broadband in the future? And those are two very distinct answers, right? Um, and then, you know, really, if you're going to start a broadband committee. Um, what you really need to do is, is what you're doing here is bringing in a variety of people and then you got to get public because you know eventually even though there's funding available the funding may not cover everything that you're going to do for a project and so if it comes down to a i'll call it a revenue bond this is obviously variety of bonds but it comes to a revenue bond and it has to come to a vote if the councils haven't been involved and the town managers haven't been involved and the the town people haven't been involved, it will not pass a vote. We've proven it, you know, it's been proven time and time again. Uh, if you, you know, you know, and that's a process, right? Everybody knows you've got to get everything in front of the council and earlier in the year, and then it's got to be passed, and then it's language has to go out, and then your vote finally comes in November, right? So it's a, it's a process, and so you just got to stay ahead of that process from a communication standpoint. I always say any broadband project is as much a marketing and a PR project as it is an actual. You know, project, project. Um, this is my first time attending one of these types of meetings and learning about Connect Maine. Do you have a sense of how far the startup planning and infrastructure grants can take communities and kind of what the yep. timeline of for a, a typical rural? Yeah, um, so through a process, right? So, um, you know, if it was a single project, a few towns getting together, right? You're going to do data gathering, the survey, that's always going to take a few months. Um, and then really what, what we do is try to build towards what we call an RFP, right, stage. So really what we're trying to do is say, okay, let's get an RFP out of the street for these this project, because then you're going to know who wants to play, <laughs> what's, the, what's the technology they want to use, what's the design, and what's the cost, and what's the time frame. Right. So to answer your question quickly, you know, that whole piece through the RFP could be six months, could be eight months, depends on, you know, some of the timing of things in between and, and the time of year. The funding that's available through Connect Maine, would that be about half the cost that the town might expect to pay or would it be 80%? Yeah, yeah. Market? So Connect Maine, when you look at their grants, um, they, I'll say require, but they appreciate um, town matching. Of some type, and that could be anywhere from twenty percent to fifty percent, right? If you match fifty percent, it's a good, better chance of getting the grant. The less you match, you know, the more they have to put into it. So there is there is a, a an expectation of towns, you know, for some of that matching. When it gets into the bigger money, right, the millions of dollars, where if you're going to do a whole build out project, there's different levels of matching for that, not fifty percent.
<laughs> it's, a, it's a big difference, big difference on those. But these smaller ones, I've noticed they go through pretty well when there's a 40 and a 50% match. So, and, and people are using that money for that. That's definitely what this money, this, this Hancock County art money could be used for as well. As you get, you know, the bigger cost, you can do that as well. So, so we, that's kind of the process to bring you through the process. So if you get the RFP, right, then now you know who wants to play. I'm sorry, I missed this one step. We also interview um, all the carriers, all the existing carriers in the area, right? So around here, it's going to be Spectrum and CCI, uh, maybe Axiom, Mark will come to the table, um, the wireless carriers, right? Just to kind of do all of that. Again, we're doing that from a Hancock County perspective. So uh, we're going to continue those conversations. We met with Spectrum earlier this week. We had an invite out to you know, consolidated. So we're just going to keep talking to these the people in the area to see. What are they, if they give us their plans or what are they thinking? Uh, because overall, it's a lot less expensive for the people that are already on the poles, you know, than people that want to build to it. Um, but there's good, you know, there's good reason as well, you know, to build your own at that time. And we, you know, we can talk about ownership, operator, right? And it gets, there's a lot to running an ISP. And that's why they're not everywhere, <laughs> right? It's, it's expensive to operate. A uh, internet service. If we really, really get, to, you know, we've talked to some of the smaller ISPs. I'll call them. You know, they're they're national, but they're in the state. You know, they're like, you know, they'll tell me they're like JD. I don't care if you give me, right? If you paid a hundred percent of capital. I still don't want the project because I can't operate it. And so that it's it's not it's not for the faint of heart, right? These are these are big projects, and so. There's definitely success stories in the state of Maine. Uh, Danny Sullivan at Down East, right? This is a few um, utility district owned projects. And so I'm not saying that they're not doable. You just have to, you got to do the finance side. You got to really look at the feasibility and the finance because there's a reason that the carriers haven't done it, which is why we're here, is because of the return on investment, right? So they're all, not all, but they're owned and they talk to their stockholders, right? And DCI got. Five six hundred million dollars worth of capital influx, right? So they're a um, they're a venture capitalist owned company now. Hotelco's the same way. Spectrum's just a big gorilla, right? So everybody everybody has a boss, and everybody has to do a return on investment. And if the return on investment isn't there, it doesn't make sense to build, right? Because these companies are in, yeah, in business to make a profit. It's not a bad thing that runs America. And so um, you just have to keep that in mind. So when you know, when it gets down to 10 houses per mile and you get to five houses per mile, the cost of the fiber build is the same. You just have less people taking the service. So that's the return on investment. Then that's what they go by. So that's that's why it's important, obviously, to get the capital influx to help these people. If you want them to public private partnership, so to speak, that they're going to build it out. Uh, but then you get into ownership models, you get into operator models, and that's a ways down the road, but that's that's kind of the pieces of it. So if you get to an RFP, you decide who you want. It may be public private, it may be a utility that you're going to own. You get into negotiations. And so you know, from our side, we have to negotiate. It's not with this project, but and then you get to building it out, right? So you need somebody to represent the town to build it out. Mission Broadband plays that role at times. So I'm just giving you the scope of everything from soup to nuts. You start where you are today. You do some data gathering, trying to figure out what's the landscape, what's the project landscape. What's the financial landscape? I should say, what's the funding landscape? Um, and you know, do these data gathering points and just keep moving the ball down. You, you know, you got to keep meeting. You got to keep talking to the public and see what they say because you could have. We have seen, and it, it changes. You know, as certainly through the course of a year or two as a project. These are long projects. You may have a you know four people on a city on a town council or five people, and you may get a five nothing, four nothing vote one time. And then the public starts rumbling and talking, and all of a sudden the vote goes to two to two or two to three, and you lose your momentum, and the, the project stop. So it's, it's very very important to have you know that communication with the public, and with the council, select board, whatever you know, however your government set up. Critical, critical piece. Uh, so that's so the the big thing that I'm uh, here from a Hancock County perspective is. To say that we have the survey, we have the um, speed test out there. We're meeting with individual towns, um, helping, as in this case, you know, work through the beginnings of a broadband uh, committee. 
Um, we can certainly come back a few different times. We can have a public forum with you. Um, if you have a project, you know, that, that at some point that you're saying, hey, you know what, maybe you're going for a, or making up a forty thousand dollar Connect Main grant, and you need some matching money. You would come. You could come to the commissioners at that point and say, "Hey, you know what? Can we have some match?" Yeah, um, and you'll see, um, because everything is public, obviously. Over the next couple of months, we're presenting some larger projects to the commissioners, so you can kind of see how that process is going to work. So that's what I got. <laughs> and I am here, more than I do. Yeah. I'm here to answer any questions. Uh, and the question I have is as far as broadband uh, involvement, are you including, well, you're doing flex, I'm sorry, you're doing fiber, you're doing copper, or you're doing LTE. Uh, are you including like satellite? Yeah, so what we look at is, you know, all, we're, you know, from our perspective, we're technology and vendor neutral. Okay. Do we know them? <laughs> Do we know what might work? Yes, yes. And so if somebody was going to come in here and we got one guy that works for us and says, you know, we're not going to let you buy a pig and a poke. <laughs> okay. Um, but we know all the technologies and how they work and how they deploy. You know, generally what's going to you know, work for you and for your area and for your customers. And part of that comes by defining broadband, right? Because if you want more than what cable can deliver, because when you hear about cable ads, everything talks about the delivered gig. Well, they do one way, right? The technology will not allow them to do anything more than 30 meg up the other way, 35 meg up the other way. It's just the technology. It's like DSL, right? DSL can do, can do you can do pretty high speeds on DSL within 100 feet of the CO, <laughs> right? Um, and, you know, I always tell people it's, it's, you know, it's attenuation basically, but it's, it's nobody's fault besides Sir Isaac Newton because it's physics. Right, <laughs> it's copper, it's electronics, and it's physics. That's all you can do. And latency, yeah, yeah and latency, right? Yep. So yes, there's there's you know five G technology, right? There's right. Satellite technology, there's hybrid coax fiber technology, right? DSL and certainly fiber perhaps. Right. And it's uh, I just remember before when it was before uh, the consolidated, it was Fairpoint. Before yeah. that, it was Verizon, and yeah. Verizon wanted to have a specific number of subscribers oh. before they came in. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, and when you look at your franchise agreements with cable, that's how they're built. Yeah. Right. They, they didn't even build cable where there wasn't enough subscribers. Which, but again, as far as if you're going to have like multiple, like a fiber and, you know, a copper together, they, they're going to have separate requirements or is that something that has to be worked out? That would have to be worked out. Yeah. 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 Cause you know, spectrum does, a variety of things, but they'll come in and say, hey, you've already got a copper plant, cable coax plant over here. Maybe we're going to build new, well, we're going to build five. It's not a, you know, nothing wrong with that necessarily. Besides now, all of a sudden, you've got happy town is fiber and happy town is coax. And, yeah, because uh, let me talk about one other thing too. Digital equity is huge, right? That's a big push. And it's also a big push from the federal funding standpoint and from the state funding. So. I encourage you to get a hold of Susan Corbett at the National Digital Equity Foundation um, and have her do a presentation because she is rock solid on her presentation. And actually, if you want to see it, um, she is going to do a presentation for the commissioners on Wednesday. I mean, next, the next commissioner's meeting is Wednesday. Typically, it's every other Tuesday, but because of the holiday, it might be a Wednesday. And she'll be on at nine o'clock. Danny. Nope. Yeah, so about a year ago, I'd spoken to the, the chief operating officer of uh, Consolidated out of Portland. And we were discussing, you know, broadband in the area. And he told me it's about a, about two years. I don't know if anybody else has heard this, but when I spoke to him, he told me in about two years, they were planning a large scale plan to deliver fiber to every every house in the state. Now, again, how long something like that takes i knew that they were i knew they were actually starting somewhat down in the in the southern part of the state but they were actually moving in that direction of um have you heard anything about that or have you come across any of that information yeah so they got an influx of cash a couple of years ago um which has stimulated their idea to build out fiber to the premise network the other piece of cash that they have is called um, rdoff Rural Digital Opportunity Fund. And so to give you some history of how the FCC has spent 
billions of dollars over the last decade or so is through this reverse auction, and they call them different versions, but really what they say is by census block, again, because that's your measurement, this census block in this area does not have broadband. So they put a bid out, they call them, it happens every few years, they say, who wants to cover the census block? And it's reverse auction, so who's going to do it the cheapest? <laughs> um, and so they started, that started years ago from dial up, they went to four over one for DSL, and then they went to 10 over one, and then they went to 25 over three. So really all that's happened is the same companies that got money for four over one, got money for 10 over one, they didn't expand the coverage, they just overbuilt. And then they overbuilt 25 over three on top of 10 over one. They haven't really expanded with this money. And then the limitations obviously are copper. So Danny, to answer part of that question, um, one of the other things we're mapping is that uh, there was a there was an auction last year, and certainly consolidated put in for that money, and we're gonna we'll um, map that out in this area as well. What they won for which areas? So they have they have money for Argo, and and let me clarify, the money that consolidated did this time um, when they bid, put the bid out was all for fiber. There's no DSL. Correct. So they, they know they had to do fiber, so all of their bids went for fiber. Um, so. RDOF is a chunk of money that they'll get to build out the fiber. Um, and they have seven years to use that, by the way. Um, yeah, he so told me he told me it was going to begin in about two years. Yeah. That, you know, and again, that's the only information I know. I've I've not had any had any further contact with him since. Sure. Um, sure. But he seemed to be pretty open about what their plans were. Yeah, and, and that's why we want to bring them to the table because it changes as time goes <laughs> on. And then they got that. Well, question. exactly. Probably six hundred million dollars worth of influx of venture capital money, right? So now they report to venture capital companies. So to somebody's point, there's got to be so many houses per mile that's in their right, that's in their their model. And if it's not there, then they're just going to say no. Um, I don't know that they'll get to one hundred percent, Danny. I haven't heard that one yet at all. Um, they do look at each project kind of specifically, and so that's why I want to bring to the table and say, what's your plans for Hancock County? Right? right. Do, you, do you have a plan? down here um, so um, and and so let me so that so that example of our law in federal money they they applied for that here's the big change um, and i'll go back to the beginning of mission broadband because i'm going to take a little bit of credit <laughs> because, because we, we spent a lot of money and a lot of time in washington when we started the company because we knew the problem was return on investment and we knew that it had to be subsidized Jim Rogers, who started our, this company, I started with him. He's been in business for 26 years. He's been on the healthcare side a lot, subsidizing, basically created a company that subsidizes healthcare circuits and equipment across the country. Started in Maine and New England, but um, so he knew, you know, he shared this um, idea of Mission Broadband was, okay, well, let's go figure out federal subsidy. That's what it's gonna take. Um, so he shared an idea down in Washington. They said, that's a great idea. Why don't you write a bill? <laughs> so we spent the first three months not knowing anything about writing a bill or a white paper. Um, we did it. We shared it in Washington. We got buy-off from NTIA and from a bunch of 30 other people. You know, they said, hey, this is a good idea. Um, and so our language was stop giving the money to the carriers and give the money to the towns, the political subdivisions. They know where the gaps are. Right, so that was kind of the gist of the language in 40 pages or less. Um, and so that language is what you're seeing now. So that is the big shift. That's why you're having these committee meetings is now what I talked about, you guys applying for money, it's the political subdivision that's gonna apply for this $100 million and this $200 million from a state, from a federal, from a county, from a town level, depending on where you are in the United States. Um, so that's a big twist. And so now the carriers are looking at the towns and going, hey, <laughs> I got to go through you to get to this money. And that is a major league shift. So I tell you that because that language was in there. We actually have a, um, one of the signed bills uh, from Senator Collins' office because they called us in King's office also thanked us for that light legislation, that language. So we'll take a little bit of credit. Our name's not on it. We can take a little credit. Um, so that's, that's the big shift. To uh, speak a little bit to Danny's question, I sit on the Franklin Broadband yep. Committee where I'm a resident, and our our select board chair was talking with 
Julie Curtis and Eastbrook. And Eastbrook, Danny, may be one of the towns that you're thinking of uh, with Consolidated. They are in the middle of a fiber project with Consolidated. And I believe it is to cover almost the entirety of the town of Eastbrook. So it's not far away, but it is, you know, it's a process there. They're a year or so into their, yep. their process. Um, consolidate is um, wholesale, I'll call it, kind of uh, plan with towns. And they've done a lot in New Hampshire in this. They're very open about sharing this information. Is they will work with you and come up with a price. You'd like to cover a town, to cover multiple towns, however you want to do it. Um, and then what they do, so when you, when you bid out, when you look at a broadband project bill, there's the kind of the backbone, which is everything that runs on the poles. And then there's your drop and your electronics in the house. So from the pole to your house is considered the drop. Then the electronics in the house, and then there's electronics back at a central office. Area. So those are the kind of the, the rough components of it all. So consolidated will price it out and say, hey, you know what, it's gonna cost $3 million for the backbone. They go to the town and ask them to pay for that. And then it's going to cost another two or $3 million for the drops. They put that on themselves. The difference is they own the drops, they own the customer, and they control the pricing. And you cannot use that, even though you are paying for that backbone, you can't use it for anything else but solid. But at the same time, what type of, uh, what type of, uh... A burden is that going to lay on a town if the town ends up, you know, subcontracting a private contractor to drop network at every, at, you know, a, a, like fiber, for instance, to every house. Oh, and yeah. then, of course, then you have, then you have, you have repair, you know, yes. that's, that's done. Yes. You have trees that come down across lines, take down fiber lines. Okay. And the last I knew to, uh, to fiber, to weld fiber back together was about 1200 bucks. <laughs> so you know i you know uh, again i i think that having a town own that i mean uh, granted i get i get the fact that you know if you can if you can own the infrastructure and then you can you know sublease or what have you, yeah. act, you know, the the service to different companies and keep prices low but you're going to have a huge infrastructure uh, well because he's in the room our supervisor of infrastructure would have a, a heck of a day on a snowstorm or a bad windstorm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not. That's what I was saying earlier, right? There, there are success stories, but it's not for the faint of heart because it's expensive to operate a network, and those are the reasons. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yes. you pay. You pay for every attachment for every pole. You pay per month. You have to have insurance for that um, as well. You've got to carry insurance because of that tree problem, right? As well as liability. Sure. Uh, yeah, you've got well, some, yeah, it's it's there's a lot that goes into the feasibility study of running the network. No even at the, even at the in, at the uh, institute right there where you're at, the the fiber coming in uh, is owned by, by consolidated, yep. um, and therefore that's what the internet you know is, is provided. However, you know if for instance the universe if if the institute wanted to go with the University of Maine as their their isp then they basically they would get their they would they would have to lease that particular part of the line for um for this service and okay. yep. roy and i checked that out once yeah is that is that through the school library yes yeah 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 jeff laterno's done a good job with that but you're right it's i mean that if you're going to lease a pair of fiber you got two people it's either going to be spectrum or it's going to be consolidated in this area Right, they've got fiber. Don't don't you know? There's fiber all through the down east. It's just not to the premise, right? There's a there's a different there's backbone all through the down east, all through Maine. I'll sit here until the day is long because I worked with companies that we built it. There is as much fiber and technology in the state of Maine as there is in Boston, Los Angeles. I don't care. We we've, we've got it up and down, east and west. We absolutely do. Right. It's a backbone fiber. It's not. It's just not fiber to the premise yet. That's all. Roy, did when when the park did their when they changed the power line over down there and they ran through that that tunnel, did they pull an extra coax through for Spectrum? I don't think they added any coax. Uh, Talking about doing that. Yeah, uh, actually, everything except the electric lines are just roped to the poles right now. So it, 
even consolidate and do their job when they were working on the project. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's, it's yes, Danny. And then, so it's, it's, it's been a successful project. So the way that they price it out is again, you own the backbone. Um, yeah. So they, that's a revenue bond or somehow you get the money. Um, they do the drops, they own the customers, they're in charge of all the repair for the backbone as well, right? So they take care of everything. Um, right. and then the way the pricing works is they have a set price per customer, you know, that's depending on the service. And then what they do is they add in, I don't know, call it eight to $12 surcharge that they collect every month. And that's what pays the bond back. Right. So it's a, it's a successful story and we can definitely connect you with folks in New Hampshire where it's been done the most. Um, the latest one I know has been Long Island, which is an island off the coast of Maine, that off Portland. So they're doing yep. it. They're doing it there right now. Right. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. So a lot to take in yeah. <laughs> for your first broadband committee meeting. Um, but the takeaways would be, um, you know, keep us in mind, we can come back. Um, certainly keep talking amongst yourselves about what you think broadband is. Push the survey and push the speed test in your areas. I heard Prospect Harbor was on here, so certainly there. Schoolsboro, Winter Harbor, right? Just keep, you know, try to keep the data gathering going, the communication going with the towns. You know, put something out in your local, you know, newspaper or coffee shop that says, hey, there is a broadband committee. Um, we recommend on a broadband committee, it sounds like you had a good um, good IT and infrastructure. Um, certainly, we say reach out to medical and uh, school education. Let's bring those people in as well, because they're, they're a good mix of people, um, you know, for a, for a committee. You can get different perspectives. We all know education has suffered. It's, it's not a secret, but it's good to hear from the, you know, education side. Any other questions? I said a lot. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks. Oh, uh, as far as all the information that you have, mm -hmm. uh, those resources, are, uh, I think uh, uh, Larry mentioned something about if those were available or oh, could be scanned in the resources. That you, you can have them. Oh, <laughs> it's too much to scan. Okay. It's a lot, and I've compiled it in pieces that are useful. Like I have. A lot of the towns that he's talking about that have successfully pulled this off right. have written it all down how to do it. So I've compiled those. Uh -huh. I've got um, various toolkits for each stage. Okay. So it sounds daunting right now, but after you dig in for a while and you start reading it, you start to see right. the process. I, I was just looking at the NTIA toolkit yeah. and it walks you through, and that's why I was asking for like the guidance going through it. Um, I, I would, I would, uh, the uh, Broadband Coalition of Maine, if you guys want to be part of that, the Island Institute is also a great resource. Um, yeah, I'm a member of everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, most I of the resources. Obviously, Connect Maine yep. is your resource. Yeah, Peggy uh, is uh, Peggy's the head of that. And yep. She's been a huge help to me. Yes. Because she's real good at saying, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Put them on this, put this on that. Yep. And talking to me about how to get those grants. Uh, yes, that's the thing. And I, I mean, right. I will help you guys. My Before I moved up here, my, my background is investment banking and venture capital. So Woo! I, can tell you, <laughs> I can tell you about the money. I can help you with the money side of it. Yep. And all that. Um, I want to not pretend to be a computer expert or a, a technology or, or broadband expert, but I do know what gets funded and what doesn't, and yeah. how that process goes down, yes. and how to how to how to put lipstick on your pig. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And that's an important thing to know how to do. Yeah. I've done yeah. RFPs. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, definitely so, from an, certainly from a grant perspective. And I've done RFPs for nonprofits, which is a slightly different animal than a regular kind of corporate. Finance. Oh, great. Right. right. RFP request for proposal. Yeah. Right. Just yeah. So, yeah. so I've done yeah. a couple of those and worked on the financial part yeah. of it. Yeah. That's really my background is finance, corporate finance. Wow. And um, due dil I was a due diligence, VP of due diligence for my firm. So that's the finding of the rocks I would find. That'd be great. Yep. That's very helpful. I don't do yeah. that anymore. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, and then you know, think about grants. It's like you know, the startup grants and the planning grants are fairly small from a um, uh, scope of work perspective, right? They're not huge, but it's the story, right? And so that's again the data gathering. You've got a story to tell. 
Yeah, the most important part, you know, you guys, John is right. The most important part is marketing and momentum of the marketing. Because if you have the town behind you, first of all, it helps you stay motivated. And from what, since I sit in the town office all day long and take calls from people asking me when we're going to build a broadband network, I know the interest is there. So you just oh. need to, to, to get the yeah. word out. Yeah. You know, we, we have already put the speed test and the survey on our town website. So it's just really, and we have a newsletter that goes out every month. So we have the resources, yeah. we just need to utilize them. Yeah, you're right. And then we just need some, some excitement, yeah, some exactly. motivation. Yeah. Yeah. And as you go down that road, you also right. want to bring in the people that um, aren't on board, right? That might be having negative spin, because you want to hear that, because that will get to the voters. <laughs> <laughs> and so you've got to get that up and you got to talk about it and understand, okay, yes, what they're saying has some truth to it, but here's what we're going to do. You know, so we need all the, all the different viewpoints of, in public. And you, as a committee member, you're selling all the time. That's yes. Always everybody's job is sell, yes. sell, sell, because you need that support in the community, especially in the structure of this type of town, the way that things oh. get paid. I mean, the selectmen are on board, especially Danny. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was unofficially kind of put in charge of this, yeah. so um, I, you know, very unofficially, unofficially, <laughs> officially, and against my better judgment. Exactly. <laughs> he tried to run away. <laughs> he didn't get out the door. Yeah, Dana wouldn't let him. He was blocked in by killer. <laughs> That's like I said. Uh, I've been doing some consultancy work for a friend. Uh, in Des Moines, where they're going through the same struggle. And she has this multi million dollar home, and she was on uh, consolidated corrupt copper, <laughs> the yeah. corroded the yeah. copper yeah. connections, and so static. Oh, and well, I'd like to make a couple of comments here. Uh, I'm brand new to, the, uh, to this kind of thing, broadband specifically. Mm -hmm. Don't know anything about it. I know how to use the internet to a certain extent, and that's my, that's the sole size of my previous experience. I've had a background in uh, electronic warfare, but that has very little to do with this. Uh, you mentioned the word daunting, it really is. It can be, I mean, give yourself some time to get familiar. Yeah, I, I, I uh, I'm surprised uh, that there is so much, so many unknowns here. Yeah. Really, I, I, I expected that there would be more uh, terra firma here to, to work from, to start from, and that it's very little, it sounds like. Uh, well, and that's why, you know, yeah, we know, that's what I'm talking about, Terry. We know what's on the poles and who's in the area. I can drive around, tell you who's around, right? Um, but it's getting that information. You know, extracting that from the carriers and extracting it from the public to say, no, I don't have down this road, right? Yeah. And you're saying, well, yeah. yeah. Maybe this is the time we should talk about what what is expected of our of this committee. So what uh, our next step? Yeah. What what is expected of the thing? And I, I mean, I uh, have to run out real quick. I got another one. At one o'clock, and then right away. Thanks, John. <laughs> John really awesome. appreciate it. Thanks. Get Thank you. Um, we'll be in touch, maybe. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Ed has my number. Okay. So you can get a hold of me, so I can come back. Okay. Most any time. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So maybe you have Zoom if I can't quite make it yet. Can I get your card before you go? Assuming I have it. <laughs> Email. Uh, Larry. Yeah. If if I could, I might. I would just want to point yeah, out that you know, we do have Winter Harbor here as well as Goldsboro. Yeah. And, and, and my, you know, I'm looking at this from an outside perspective. I think any, you know, in Winter Harbor, for, any, for broadband to get to Winter Harbor, it's going to go through Goldsboro. It doesn't make sense to really treat these two communities separately, I think. Uh, historically, it is a political, yeah. and that's all it is. Uh, technologically, it, I think it makes sense, and I, I just want to get other people to think it, I think it makes sense for the two towns to really try to operate together in this and with their respective committees. Because 
right now we don't have one unified committee. We have two channels with their own committee and forming a committee. Yeah, but before we get to that, I, I'm really curious as to what uh, the town of Coolsboro expects of this embryo called a broadband committee. Okay, what, so what is the expectation? What what uh so initially we want to do the pieces where we gather data. That's the first thing because we can't make a plan. We don't know what we need to do. So we need to get these surveys done. We put that up on the on our website. And it's really going to come down to gathering that information so that when we move forward on planning it, we know we have a better idea of what's going to work for us. In other words, every plan doesn't fit every count. So that'll give us, it, it's steps. You're not going to see the whole picture right now because you're not immersed in it, you haven't been looking at it, but over time, you're going to see it's pretty simple. It's just that the data has never been gathered before. And it's not, it's not too hard. We've got, what, 27 miles of roads there, boss? 65, 27 pounds in the of 65. So that's our that's where we start. We start, you know, it's baby steps. You start with the basics and you flesh out the plan over time. And one of the things that once you know what you need, you can figure out how much money. You need. Right. And the other thing with dealing with money was we were talking about the data inclusiveness, where inclusivity, whatever the term is, whereas there are people that can't afford. Yeah, pay sixty to hundred dollars for the broadband. I'm still waiting to hear what is expected of the committee. I, these are little pieces, you know, right? Baby steps. I, I understand right. that concept, and I understand that all things will be revealed in time. But what does the town want of the committee? Is, is the committee's purpose to uh, to do the assessment? Yeah, to. And I'm not even sure I know what the hell an assessment means at this point, but that's how raw I feel. But we are here. Uh, so the, the town expects the committee to take responsibility for putting together plans, do an assessment of availability of broadband capabilities, uh, wherever they are and whatever the source, uh, and then identify which ones are the best, which ones are the are the cheapest, which ones are the most expensive. I guess I'm, I'm okay. probably on the right track, but you I don't are. know. And one of the reasons that I compiled all this information for the community is that a lot of those kind of questions are answered in the of town, so we argue that towns our size, towns with the same problems that we have, and it's step by step of how they did it. The yeah. Island Institute is one of them. Steve and Sandy, uh, how far along are you? Uh, we are light years ahead because we already had this meeting. A week ago, <laughs> we're right yeah. in the same place. Ah, uh, okay. Light years ahead. It's actually, might have been a week and a half. Okay, yeah. so you understand where I'm going. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Now we're deer in the headlights moment. Okay. Um, it was helpful to hear um, John's um, presentation again. It was slightly different, but it was basically the same thing. It was helpful for me, um, and I think. And is correct in that you know we collectively begin with figuring out what we have so we can figure out what we need that generates the project of who needs to be connected and where um and i think larry too i took the survey um in, in goldsboro and um Several of the questions are, you know, why do you use uh, connectivity? You know, is it for school? Is it for work? Is it for medical uses? You know, entertainment, that kind of thing. How many people in your household use it at one time? Um, one of the things is a speed test. And just 10 houses past the exit of the park here, I got, oh, I don't know, six and a half download and put four four upward speed. I mean, so, I mean, we don't have the connectivity here and then the more of those we have, then we know that, yeah, East Scooter Drive has a need or 
you know, um, all bunion has a need or whatever the, the different things are. And other ones, route one seems to be okay because it's the main backbone of the trunk line. Uh, so we're talking like what they used to call war driving, where people would be driving around looking for unsecured <laughs> uh, routers so you could use those. So you're doing some just any. Well, I have those uh, in there. So in, oh, okay. Yeah, no, I did. Uh, oh, for your own house. Yeah, because that's. One of the things that I'm just looking at that's the NTIA, they talk about it's a toolkit, is what it is. And probably this along the same lines that basically it's just, in here. Oh. There we go. Yeah, and it's telling you how to set up the uh, the roadmap, how to use the toolkit, planning a community broadband road, uh, assembling a team, the vision, gaps, resources. Making you have a broadband manager to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I have all of that is yeah. in here. And that's why I said that's what I was going to ask you about. You know, as, well available. As, as well as the, the town for, um, I don't know if you read, there was an article, uh, A Tale of Two Towns, about broadband coming into Leeds and Hampton. And Hampton crashed and burned and Leeds is soaring. Wow. And it all came down to their process. It all came down to ginning up that community support. It's, right. It's really important. And so, you know, as, as your committee unfolds, you'll see who's got the skill sets and where. Right. You know, not everybody's going to be good at the technical part. That's just a fact. Not everybody's going to be good at the financial part. But some people are just really good at pulling data and putting things together that way. And some people are really good with people. Right. And that's important. It's, it's just as important as the financial side. It's just as important as the technical side. So, uh... Roy and Roger on on Zoom. Uh, either one of you gentlemen like to weigh in? Not particularly. I'm content to listen. <laughs> um, well, I, I this is Roy Groover. I appreciated the presentation and having been through all of this in you know a different life um it isn't sound it, it's not any simpler than it ever was <laughs> and, and um i think it's going to take that you know what i believe was ann was talking about which is it's going to take a little bit of this and a little bit of that and uh when when you throw it all together um i think I think we can find the strengths that we have within us, um, along with the resources that that have been accumulated to at least get started. And you know, I'm I'm hoping that once we start, the momentum will help carry us through. It's not going to be an easy task, uh, but uh, but these are also just words <laughs> at this point. Pat, are you? Are you uh, tuned in as a prospective member of the committee or as an interested community member? Member of the community. I mean, I'm oh. a, a prospective committee member. I didn't hear what you said. Prospective committee member. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right. Like Roy, I have a lot of background in um, re replying to RFPs and. Um, I have a, a statistics background, so I can help out with the surveys. Um, so I, I would, as I had left my name and contact information in the town office in October, that I'm very interested in getting broadband service. My husband lost his job when I had my stroke because he couldn't he couldn't have reliable internet to do to work remotely when he had to stay here with me. And I'm sure we're not the only case that happened like that lost opportunities lost i like to i couldn't it was really hard to tell who was talking because the images are so small on my phone but somebody was talking about <clears throat> um the what would be the status in the community with uh broad with the broad infrastructure improvement and what would be the status of the community without it and i think that's a really good question to answer because there's, it sounded like the consultant was dealing a lot with technical feasibility, but then 
it'd be interesting to know how many people, how many households within the community currently have internet capability at home and how many who don't have it are interested in getting it if there were a reliable source. I mean, I don't think we know the answers to any of those questions. So I would be enthusiastic about helping out with that, yes. Um, so to try and get back to what your, your goal is here, are you thinking about a purpose for the committee? I think maybe it's easier if we look at a, if we don't try and come up with a purpose for the committee or an expectation for the committee as it will finish, I think if we treat it in stages, let's say our first for example, our first thing is to see that the survey is pushed uh, to the extent possible, that we, we distribute the survey, because the survey is being done by Hancock County. We don't have to do the survey, correct, Dan? It's, it's on our, we're doing it we're on the yeah. we're, You're sharing it. Yeah, and it's, sharing it's, it. it's being shared but in the But that community. data is being collected by the commission. Right, so they're collecting the data. The survey is already there. We don't have to make the survey. We just, as a committee, have to push it, sell it, and get as many people to participate as possible. And then while, uh, while he's, he said there's no end date for the survey, maybe as a committee, we want to set a deadline for us to have gathered a certain amount of data to get started with just to, to be able to make a start rather than try and picture the whole thing all at once, just focus on the I, data gathering. Yeah, I think that's important. Uh, you know, you don't bite off the whole thing too immediately. It's it's obviously going to be going to be a piecemeal effort. We would really like it back. But uh, I'm kind of a long range thing when it comes to organizational things and uh, I just want to get it. I want to get a feel for what the scope of this job will eventually be, and I, it, it will be a job. Clearly, uh, the more competent people, experienced people we have on the committee, the better, obviously. Uh, and there'll be some time dedication to this. So everybody who has signed up to be a, a potential committee member needs to keep that in mind. This isn't. For example, Mark asked me the other day whether I thought this was going to be a long-term project. And in my uh, uh, in my immediate response was that I didn't think it would be beyond six months. Now, how foolish that was. Uh, so that shows that I did not have an appreciation for what was involved at all. Not at all. So, and I also like your other comment that uh, when it comes to this technology fusion, if you will, between communities, uh, it very well might require some collaboration. They have like a splitting like committee overall? Yeah, or well, something like that. You're talking like, again, you're talking different monies supported by different towns. So you right. have it separation. Is, it is some, yeah. It is it is. Thing. yeah. But you know, you're along the same lines. And again, it's going to have to come through one town to help the other. A question. Um, I believe there's a comprehensive plan or planning committee that is starting to either gear up or has already. And I'm wondering whether this is an element that is going to, uh, or whether there's any connection or uh, with us, with them, and if there isn't, should there be, or is their timeline too far out, or any comment on that? That's an excellent point. Jim. Uh, I don't know where they're at right now, but yeah, it would uh, definitely. I can probably find that out. I a lot of time with all the Yeah, I mean, it would definitely benefit both committees, I think. Sure. You know, it would be, def it would be questions for the comprehensive committee that they would want to incorporate. And uh, yeah. Did you hear that, Roy? Okay. Sandy. Oh, I was just going to say a couple of things that have come up from our conversations. 
for the survey that's online was designed by Hancock County. I would just suggest that everybody take a look at that and make sure that it is the answers that you want to get for our region where we have summer tourism. There are a lot of different things in our community that doesn't exist for the general Hancock County. Um, I mean, John already said that he could do some tweaking on the survey. It's not necessary that it needs to be on that survey. It can be questions that could be asked in the community. Um, and the second thing, and again, I think you may have gotten this one also, is the Island Institute process. Yeah. I think that's exactly what you're asking about. Is yeah. What is the process that you have the All the so they, It's available and there's a whole, it's just a matter of going through and kind of checking off who are the key people. Absolutely having somebody from education and healthcare. I was just um, contacting Wolfro and Northern Light to find out what, and maybe somebody in your community is a good outreach for health um, at the doctor's office. And he said he got dropped from his Zoom, an important Zoom meeting. The doctor at Wolfro Clinic can't even you know, be doing telehealth. Um, so that and RSU 24 Delta Education is also very willing to be involved if there's not other educational folks that are involved. Points, very good points. Yeah. Uh, how many people are on the three? Three? Four. Four. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we recruited somebody. Yeah, four. Um, yeah. And also to your question, or actually Roy's question about um, at least how I personally look at the broadband component of the comprehensive plan. Um, is that it is a, um, a focus area just as housing or infrastructure or recreation or natural resources would be. So um, I see it as the broadband committee would advise or, or present to the comprehensive planning committee um, what they feel is important for the complaint committee to incorporate. incorporate as they see fit. Yes, makes sense. And my understanding of comprehensive planning also is that it's, it's a year and a half to two year process, which I envision this is probably going to be going right alongside with it, if not taking longer. Hopefully not longer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think broadband is a subset of comprehensive planning. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's just something that requires a lot of detail the long term as far as winter harbor and Hillsboro go every everybody wins in front of it you know you, good luck selling a house but no internet that's right you know and if you point that out to people they'll change their attitude if they you know don't want to care about it it's just a fact we have to be connected then. Well, there, there will still be people that will not want to be connected. Sure. And they don't have to be off the grid and um, conservation lands that we have that our region is very a high rate of conservation lands. So getting that equipped is important as well. So, Danny, are you there? No, he's not there. Come on. He's still on. He's on mission. So, uh, so let's say that, the, that, that this committee forms, I'm still feeling things out. I yeah. haven't decided uh, what my involvement is going to be yet, but uh, maybe there are others who share that. I've actually got people all the time that are now contacting me to find out about getting into this committee. Oh, I really? just wanted to, today was originally just going to be, I was just going to meet with John, and then you guys expressed an interest, which yeah. is awesome. So that's how we got to all be here. So yeah, well, we're, we're taking those first faltering steps towards finding our way. Sure. You know? Sure. Uh, and I think it'll get easier and it'll get clearer to you over time. I mean, yeah. if you have a tactical mind, obviously, we're doing electronic work. Uh, you'll see it. It'll, it'll start uh, to unfold. I, I kill people in my mind. That's why it's electronic work. You got to find it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know what I'm saying? It'll, it'll get easier and more. You'll be able to see the road more clearly as you get up to speed on what we're trying to do. And again, uh, what I'd like to do is look at all those uh, information we have. I can always drop it back off at the office. 
Yeah, I mean, I, this is for you guys. Oh, okay. So, and it has a lot of different stuff. Yep. Um, soup to nuts. Cool. Yeah, in the city of Fort Collins, which did an entire wine wow. communication. Yeah, that's the, that's the big one. And then all the main stuff. That they can do. So, Roy uh, Grover, Grover, excuse me, you mentioned that you've been down this road before. Yeah, uh, I've done it a number of times, uh, both within a campus and then uh, throughout the state of Pennsylvania, but obviously not by myself. <laughs> well, given our, our situation, uh, we're kind of fragmented in a sense. Uh, you're there, we're here. Uh, uh, what, what could you lend to what you've heard so far today? Uh, what could you lend in the near term in terms of uh, assistance, participation? Well, I mean, I think I agree 100% with getting the data so we know the extensiveness. I mean, we can't propose, we can't write an RFP, we can't, you know, do much of anything other than maybe ask for a a startup or a planning grant until we know what the what our universe is. And also, I mean, I think we need to do everything we can to get out um, to alert all of the people, both who live, who, you know, are full-time residents and those of us right now who are part-time residents to get out and do that survey information so we can, the faster we have that and the more accurate it is from the greater part of our universe that, you know, that will, I don't say fast track because it never is going to be a fast track, but having that baseline information is essential. And the sooner we can get it, the better. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if if we have how we can reach out to folks, okay. maybe our part-time residents or uh, if, if we're interested in doing that because they're taxpayers too, um, and whether we should be doing some other kind of outreach to them other you know besides putting it on the website and maybe in the newsletter but you know yeah. figuring that out i think will be an important step forward yeah and, and that's one of the challenges of this community uh is outreach getting feedback timely feedback or feedback at all in some cases in many cases uh concerning any given objective or project so um I agree with you. Uh, you got to start with data collection at, in terms of the population, who has it, who does it, and a, a number of other questions. I haven't taken a survey myself and I haven't even seen it, but that's going to be the first thing that I do. Yeah. And, and think about its applicability to the, to the entire community and how we, how we can uh, ask the community to participate. That's what you had in mind, Roy. Yeah, I, I think that's where we have to start. And uh, also for those who aren't aware, one of the other hats that I wear, I'm the Franklin's uh, board member for RC24 and I'm currently chair of the RC24 board. So I have some ties into education as well. So uh, it's, so would that make sense to people to sort of define the committee's responsibility the goal is, at least initially yeah. as that well I, I i really want the town uh, I, I really need the town to be concise and uh accurate as to what the expectations are it can be it could be a paragraph but there the words that were used before were good words, assist in analysis and towards what objective? Uh, and everybody here, many are, are familiar with statements work. So I see this as uh, what I'm asking for is some kind of a statement of work. So uh, the committee has some guidance. Yeah. As to what it We're kind of at the letter of intent stage. That's right. Towards the statement of work. That's right. Because even since this kind of got handed off to me, and I know how to start a plan, run a plan, and wait to plan happen, but I 
just like you, I don't know all the pieces yet. What are all the pieces of the puzzle? What, what is everything that we need to put together? That's why I'm offering my time to kind of help get you guys on the road, like we spoke about. And um, just with the understanding that my time during the day belongs to the town. And after that, I'm definitely open to helping to push some of this forward and do some of the legwork that I can do as a town employee. You know, kind of coordinating your guys' efforts with other committees, selectmen, town manager, whatever you need. But I think that at this stage, in terms of being able to define exactly what you're going to do, you're actually going to do that. And that you're going to do a big part of that because I mean, in terms of assisting, who you're assisting is the consultant right now because they're gathering that data for the county and we are part of that county. You see, no, I didn't even, I didn't even catch that. My, if, if you were to ask me, what do you think this committee's objective is in terms of assisting, assisting mm -hmm. in particular, I would have yeah. said to assist the town. No, right now, we hired, the county's hired a, you know, well paid Hancock County, nice chunks of money. So we need to jump on board and take advantage of their consultant while we have them. That's why I got John involved with us because I want to get as much free information out of them and the tools that they're already using for the county so that we can use new tools for us, not really good for me and use our time wisely. Because I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys are tired of doing this. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's right. I'm semi retired, and but I, I am. And I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you that at this point, considering the disparate pieces of this committee, both with it's day one, yeah, yeah. but I understand one. that. But, but please allow me to, yeah. to, to speak my mind here, and that is, uh. I would, I would have liked to have seen the town invest in, in some kind of a paid consultant to get this role. Uh, I'm certainly not in a position to lead this committee. I'm not. I, I can take bits and pieces and help out. But who's going to chair this thing? I'm not going to chair it because it's too big for me to handle. I don't have the time. I don't have the time to, to do it. I don't have the bandwidth. I think that person will, you'll begin to see who that person is. Leaders emerge. Yeah, well. And like I said, we're day one, we're, we're barely having the first meeting. So okay. I think. Okay, if there are no larger expectations than what you're getting today, then I guess we're up there. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there is no expectation yet. You'll define, you'll, you'll, you'll determine what we need. And at the point that we can determine what we need, so we can determine what we need to do. And once we determine what we need to do, we can figure out where those contributions will come to. Who can do what? what? What are we able to do as a committee? What do we need money? You know, part of what planning grants are for is hiring consultants. So let's get through the startup grant, which will give you some walking around money to do some more surveys to get the community involved. The planning grant. Yeah, planning grant. That's the that's the first step. Yeah, that's the first step. So, a couple thousand dollars so that you're not coming out of pocket for anything. Um, Have you guys gotten along? That we, road at all? We, in, in our initial meeting, we talked about maybe we should hire a consultant. That's as far as we know. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what that, that's what comes to my mind immediately. Excuse me. <clears throat> yes. Um, <clears throat> The the person who was speaking, I think it was the consultant when he was giving the the different the planning, the startup, the infrastructure deadlines. I think he said that first one, that startup deadline was I could hardly hear what he said. It was something like January 20th. No, there the, the startup grants are every for a, uh, deadline for they're every month for startup. first of every month. So it's a rolling process of, I mean, the money is available all the time and then the windows open up for a certain period then they close and a new window opens up. Startup grants, which is the very first step are every month. 
Uh, will you be sharing um, any kind of documentation or PowerPoint from his presentation? I just handed off the documents to um, Mark. Yes. So Mark has some of that. And then um, if you go on to main.gov front slash connect main, connect ME, it's a wonderful resource with so much information about that part of the process. And there's all kinds of uh, recorded sessions that they've done, Q&A sessions about funding and, and filling out those applications. It's pretty simple because it's designed to be done at the community level. It's not, it's not set up like, like an RFP is a complicated, huge document. Okay, the grant forms are not, they're, they're designed to be done by towns. You know, they're not, there's not an expectation that it's going to be at a, you know, master's of business finance level. But what they want to know is that we've gathered the information that we need and that we have some idea of what to do to move forward. And that's why I think it's valuable to use the resources of other towns that have done it, that have successfully done it, and have thrown in the towns that have not successfully done it so that you know where the pitfalls are and where the problems are. So are, are you planning on sharing the um, the consultants documents with those of us who were on Zoom or no, what is the plan for that? We, we can't do it because it's all paper and it hasn't been scanned digitally. There are several binders and uh, packets of documents that uh, Anne has uh, put together over time. Pat, if you want to email me, I can send you, I, I can help you and send some stuff. Are you... Are you the one that's out of, are you out of town? California. No, I live in Prospect Harbor. Okay. But, but my question isn't about the, all the massive volumes of data on the web or that has been collected. It's, it's really very small request is the consultant had a presentation and I wondered if we can get the information from his presentation. Oh, yeah. His presentation was verbal. Yeah. Yeah. He, he summarized. Yeah, we have a recording of it. Uh, I mean, we'll summarize the information. I can send you a link to the recording if you like. Thank you. Yeah, how does that work? How does that recording? Oh, okay. I call Roy and say, hey, how do I? You have to be the administrator. What's that? The administrator, you can record it. And I do this for a session. And what I did is I sent it overseas to get a transcription of it. So they took the whole thing and transcribed it. And it was very accurate. There were very few things. It was mainly syntax errors. Is it a free? That wasn't. The transcription wasn't. But the, this the Zoom session is free. And it, it's small audio file. And you can send it. Or you can put it up on a draw file. So oh, yeah. Up in the cloud. Oh, like tell me uh, all the town meetings. Okay. All the select all meetings yeah. are recorded yeah. too. Okay. I'm sorry, I have a question about, I think the other Roy, if I can refer to him, is that uh, mentioned that I, I think he's the head of the R, this the school board district? Yes. Okay, so, so essentially then we have a part of that, some representation from education. And on the Connect Main site, they list a whole bunch of potential stakeholders who should be involved. I, but I haven't heard that we have anyone from healthcare, yeah. which is a big, in my mind, a really big important piece, the, some kind of representation either soon or before we go into the RFP stage, you know. Uh, yeah. That's the stage that you're in right now with this committee. It's assembling all those, right. all your stakeholders, all your shareholders. Do we have anyone from healthcare at this point? No, we're not. Okay. I'm, I'm with Healthy Acadia, so I'm happy to reach out to others. I've already put a reach out to uh, Northern Light and Goldsboro Clinic. Um, I also wonder about Danny Mitchell with bringing in just first aid, first responders. We have lots of folks um, doing safety work in the community, so it may be somebody closer than Northern Light. Well, I think it's more like telemed and things like that yeah. that we're looking for um, a need as opposed yeah. to a first aid, well, first responder person. They're still responding to the technology. But 
that would be my suggestion. I'm happy to reach out to figure out if anybody else has suggestions in the community that I'll keep Thank working you. on. Radical. I think everybody should should do, I mean, use your intuition. You're all very smart, educated, live, managed to live to adulthood. Here. So, mm -hmm. you know, follow your, follow your intuition, follow your leads. You'll know if it's a good one or not as you get down the road. And you'll, and I think, I know I'm finding more and more people interested in this project as I get into it. As I get into it and people find out and I give presentations at selected meetings, people are reaching out to me, which is great because, I mean, Roy, I think I met you over the phone. Didn't I call you up or some, or you called me? Yes. I don't remember how we met. And I was like, and you, you bring a lot to the party too with your background. And there's people like that everywhere in this community. And it's just a matter of going out and finding it. And everybody benefits from God. And, you know, and that, that's going to be an important piece is putting together that you know, marketing kind of stuff. Or why, are, why is this important to you? You know, in sales, we say, find the pain. Everybody's got it somewhere. Okay, what, has what do they need? What has been communicated to the prior thus far? I know there was an article in the paper. That the fish ball was good. Uh, that was a good start. But I don't recall seeing any kind of a flyer from the town office or from the selectmen that announces the formation of a committee. It was at the meeting. It, it was like at the meeting. Do you watch the meetings? No, but I'm talking about paperwork, a, a document that is sent out to every household. In the, Oh. The newsletter goes out once a month. So yeah. the things that I asked, I mean, the, the first thing that went out in the newsletter was about the survey. Okay. So that if did you go out in the yeah, went out in the okay. newsletter, and also um, I have been giving have given now two updates of the selection. So I think it's probably going to work well if you don't go to the meeting but watch it on Zoom or watch the recording. Yeah. Yeah, but that? we're in, you know, we're like I said, these are the first steps that we're taking on. You know, I've spent a lot of my time putting that together, figuring out, learning about it myself. Yeah. Because you you know, I can't help you if I don't know what I'm talking about. So I mean, I know a lot about starting businesses and getting the process going, but I don't specifically know how to build broadband that way, but people do it, so clearly it can be done. Uh has anything been said uh, in, in the newsletter that you're speaking about? Was there a, a request for all the new members of all households to participate in the survey? The site was yeah, identified. Asked. This was in our town newsletter? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't recall. So. And it will continue to be, uh, I'm trying to get a whole section just for that. Yeah. But I mean, the selectmen just gave the bill ahead. Two or one or two meetings ago, there was formal committee. Okay. So that's when I started that. It's, it's literally been in the last month. Okay. Right. So that may be why, you know, and we've been through the holidays and all yeah. that. Yeah, well, but I, it's going to pick up some momentum because now I have the bit between my teeth. There we go. Yeah, right here. Hello. And uh, it's on the website. There's yeah. a topic of there. I'll ask you about the survey. Take the survey. Yeah, well, maybe. Uh, I have to concur with everybody's comments thus far about focusing on first things first. Right. And uh, that appears to be getting this uh, profile of the community to develop so we know what our baseline is right now concerning who has it, who doesn't. Yeah. And you guys are, you know, you're community leaders and people know you guys. And, and the selectmen too. And, just if, if everybody's pushing it, it's yeah. going to well, happen. pushing it in uh, terms of getting people to take the survey, getting people to get involved. Yeah, what, what I'm driving at though is that the methodology that's important in pushing them to do that. Uh, there has to be uh, a pretty comprehensive approach, to take. right? But it's organic, I mean, you know, if so, like, someone respects you, Larry, they're gonna, and you say, Hey. We, we want you to do this survey. We we're trying to get a feel for the coverage in the town. This is important. Spread it around. Tell everybody you know. I mean, yeah. it really starts that way. Yeah. 
starting a conversation, I think, about how we brought up how is it with broadband today and what would that look like in 10 years or down the road? I think that very basic opening conversation at somebody to say, what do you think? And this is why we're doing that. Yeah, it's, like I said, it's an internet age, especially now with, you know, I say post COVID, but during COVID. Yeah. Uh, you see all these uh, remote learning and meetings, and I've had, I had my annual physical done in seven video sessions. Yeah. Uh, then we had the three clips out of Togus, and so I had all those were good. Uh, but then I've had sessions with Norton Whites, the telehealth that's like its own fault. So, Winter Harbor folks, you came today just uh, one with your driver showing up. Today. Can can I, I, yeah, yeah. Have, we've been talking. Oh, and we don't, can yeah. I give any comments to through? So yeah. you can't not talk. <laughs> I was just. Yeah, that makes sense, and yeah. and we have property here in Cook yeah. So yeah. we have property in both towns. Wow. Oh, so are you married? No. no. Oh. <laughs> she has a place in Winter Harbor. A place here. Okay. And I live in Millbridge, where we have like. Okay. And that was a process. So, who chose yeah. your committee? We don't have a website. Yeah. We, 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 we have a really have we have we have we have have park. Yeah. I put yeah. yeah. it on my agenda. Let's and get to it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always here, so I don't know what goes on. The numbers. town of Winter Harbor also does not have a descriptive. It was literally at, a month ago the select board said we would like to have a committee. Several of us raised our hands and we formed a committee. We don't have a title list of what our okay. partners are. So because a month and a few days before. Before that, the county came to all the towns and said, hey, we've got this consultant, we're trying to do all this. So everybody's in that cluster of sort of yeah, my the dust is flying and we're yeah. trying to figure out what, what it is. I, I think for you town administrative type people, personally, I think it makes all the sense in the world that it's a concerted effort. Um, but I also know that there's a lot of history with people that have lived here for a lot of years and generations, and it's not always easy to work together. Um, so I don't know what the best method of, you know, is it is it uh, a handshake, a letter of understanding or something between two select boards saying, hey, we think this would be a great idea. And who starts that conversation? I don't know. I mean, I'll talk to my staff and see where they want to go. But I mean, I think. Mexico. He's a good one to bridge this gap. But you know, he's not with Dana and she was asking for the Well, I mean, it's just that Dana's connection with the other side. I agree. Yeah. So that's why we're here. So is that is that what you're going to do, Anne? Take this back and present it to the selectmen as, as uh, perhaps the best way forward is to We've already collaborate. Talked about that. You already have. Yeah, yeah because she and I have been talking for okay. weeks. And so, and Danny, obviously, I work for Danny. So he's yeah. a selectman. And so we've already been looking at this. It's just really been a matter of getting everybody together. Okay. And so then Roy was able to pull this together. So, I mean, I think we have been doing that. So, can, should we then? Uh, think of ourselves as one going forward. I wouldn't officially do that until no, I'm our sure. Power blesses. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure. I mean, I'm sure. Well, it's fine with me. I know my guys. Yeah, yeah, I don't know that anybody here has any power to bless anything as being official. Right. right. But I'm certainly. Yeah. Right, but it's selling the idea, just like you're talking about yeah. selling the survey, right. selling the idea yeah. in our respective administrations so of we should be working together. I, I would suggest, unless I mean, I get the sense that this committee feels like the two towns logically should work together on this. Unless somebody on the committee felt differently, I think it would be good to just get a, a request to the select board of Winter Harbor and Gouldsboro separately saying, we think it makes sense to work together. Can you give us that blessing to operate as one committee? I was... Um, texting as our CEO, he was asking about an update. And so he, he is advocating that the, we work together as a peninsula. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, don't, I can't imagine why we do it. 
the all, all we're, money. We're, we're all money. The only is, is an island inside of Goldsboro, so I don't know. We're going to have a I don't know how separate fiber cord. <laughs> you're going to let it under the ocean? <laughs> Well, they're coming from Bar Harbor. They're close enough. That, to that's how they do the hire. Yeah. 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 That's the primary islands. That is a potential solution we could look at. So, I was going to say the only that thing that I look at is um, under because I literally have no idea and haven't been on the connect main site. Because if any of the any of the grant opportunities are population based or like what they would require to match funding or that sort of thing, that's the absolutely only thing. It's based on survey. Yeah. Okay. It's based on providing service to people that don't have service. But I mean, is um, so, yeah, so where does that help and where does that hurt? Because sometimes yeah. when you have higher populations or whatever, then you might be required to have like a, a larger, like, not sure, you know, something. Yeah, yeah. I think we're going to tip that. Yeah, that's why it seems fun. The projects and the, and the funding that we're going after is designed for rural. Yep. So rural Maine is not for a it's not Maine for it's us. Right. Rural. I would also add to that, we're not just rural Maine, we are a tourist season right. that really expands. I tried to hone in with John about that. We're a little bit different. Right, but the whole coast, you can see that along the coast. Yes. 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 So before we went on that, I mean, that's kind of the same. Well, and when John presented to us, um, we did talk about this and he said most definitely a concerted effort would be a favorable grant um, um, approach. You know, if, if each of the communities was putting in for a separate grant, um, they may both get them. But if together we put in for yeah, a we grant, we have a lot more power because it's a bigger or uh, constituency, but you know, the agreement of all the people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, really cool. There you go. That being said, I don't know how that impacts the town manager to give an approval for writing for the um, startup grant for our town because we have no connectivity to our government. We don't have our customers. Yeah. So I don't know how that impacts that. Yeah, there's right. details. Yeah, so there's that financial detail that yeah. again, we're not efficient. So I think we started. Let's take this committee to schedule the next meeting. Yeah. And let's move on to next steps. So and yeah. in the interim, if you guys can look at this, and I mean, <laughs> when you look through that, it's going to yeah. do so much more to you. And you're going to yeah. understand so much more. And it, just from where I first read through, sleep. Right through sleep. it, and I've gone through like Connect Maine, I've gone through the NCIA, and they're all saying the same mantra, the same yeah. mantra. This is how you set up committee. This is how you get your vision. This is your planning. And, and in there somewhere is a little thing called, you know, the makings of a broadband. Who's good to run a committee like this? So put you up there. You may have somebody already. Not really. Like I think actually Roy's going to be a great resource to see yeah. the yeah. This is this is the real yeah. Yeah. So and, and I gave you guys a spreadsheet with everybody's numbers and emails, and I gave you an added list. Right. I made a copy that this is one to yeah. back up on that. Keep it all together, though. all that stuff together. If you could reach out to those people, okay. that would be good. Yeah. 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 Y
Danny said he had to leave. Larry? Yes. Uh, I'm really great at reaching out to people. I've been reaching out 